Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about the critical socialization period, really how to expose your dog to something in a positive way during the critical socialization period. Now, if you, uh, you should be, if you're watching this video as a link in an email, it should have a link to the page where we have a discussion about critical socialization period, as well as a checklist. If you uh, are not uh, looking at this there, if you go to doggoneproblems.com slash critical socialization period, and that's period spelled out, not a period at the end. And it might be critical dash socialization dash period. Uh, but uh, there's a checklist there, and there's a page that talks a little bit about, uh, about what we're going to talk about here. This is basically, we want to create a positive association. Now, for a lot of puppies, sweeping is something they don't really like. 11, 11, puppy, 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 11. Come here, sweetheart. There we go. And a little trick to get a puppy to come to you is to just kind of uh, drop down like this. Come. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this treat into Levin's mouth. And as soon as I do, Anna's going to start sweeping slowly. And go ahead and pull it back. There we go. So basically, it's as, it can be as simple as that. Now, this is a really simple exercise. Um, some things are going to be a little bit more difficult, like vacuum cleaners and things along those lines. Now, if you have a vacuum cleaner, we're going to imagine that's a vacuum cleaner. We can do a couple things. So we can basically take a high-value training treat like this and just and it's, leave it to soap. Now, in this case, she's holding it because it's a broom. But if this is a vacuum cleaner, you want the vacuum cleaner to be still and not moving at all. And basically, all you want your puppy to do is practice approaching it. So I just throw a treat. The puppy comes up and gets it and gets to walk away. So you want to keep on doing that until your puppy doesn't have any lean. If your puppy's back leg looks like this, like they're stealing second base, that's an indication they're still not comfortable with the object. Some things it's going to be easier to expose them to, some things will be a little bit more challenging. So the first thing you want to do is just have your puppy approaching it without any hesitation like, like uh, 11 is right here. The next stage is I would actually take one of these treats and put it on top of the vacuum cleaner. Let's see if 11 can do this right now. So again, it's not on and nobody, and Anna's only holding this because it won't stand itself. You don't want to have anybody touching it. We want to make it as easy as possible. And once your puppy will come up and take the treat off of it without any without hesitation, the next stage that I would like to do is uh, create a positive association with that sound of it. So when Anna, uh, I'm going to have Anna just raise it up. And, well, actually, we don't even need to do that. I was pantomiming. We don't need to do that. So basically what I would do is take a treat like this and have Anna working with me. So I would, I would pop the treat in his mouth and say, and Anna would turn the vacuum cleaner on. He's chewing. Turn it off. She's chewing. So the idea is when the puppy hears the vacuum cleaner goes on, there's a treat already in her mouth. So you pop the treat in first, then turn the vacuum cleaner on only for a second, and then turn it off. Now, if this causes your puppy to run away, then your puppy is too close to it. It's too uh, intense. So what I do then is I increase the distance, slow down the speed, or lower the volume. So if turning it on here spooked the dog and ran away, I might actually have this, the vacuum cleaner, in a separate room. Be talking to somebody on a Bluetooth uh, so I can just be talking, and just say, 11, come over here, and now. And they turn it on and then turn it off. So really when you're turning it on and off, it should be only on for like a second or so at a time. We want to keep on doing that until you can pop it in your puppy's mouth, the puppy doesn't blink or the ears don't rotate, no problems. Then you want to bring the vacuum cleaner in the room and be as far away from the puppy as possible, pop a treat in the puppy's mouth and then turn it on and off. And then gradually get the, the vacuum cleaner closer and closer to the puppy. Move the vacuum cleaner closer to the puppy. You can let the puppy approach the vacuum cleaner too. But the whole point of this is we're creating this positive association. Um, some things will go a little bit faster and a little bit slower. Um, if I have this real quick. When I was trying to use my puppy Quest, I, he was coming towards it, and I put it on the counter, and it started sliding, and then it went like And just like that, it startled him. So I had to spend about a half an hour working on this. If that's the case, so we go startled her, I should say. So again, we're just going to throw the tree, drop, and let the puppy go towards it and run away. So there's a lot of things on the checklist. We have about 244 or 300. 344 items, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I created it. Uh, here. Uh, but the more that uh, you want to just knock those things out as uh, expeditiously as possible, you won't be able to get through all of them. So make sure you sort that list as it talks about on the page on Doggone Problems. So you're uh, getting the stuff that your puppy's going to be most likely to experience first. And the stuff that your puppy's not going to do a lot of, you can leave that towards the end because you probably won't get through them all. But make sure you try to knock out about 10 a day. Uh, you still won't get through them all. But uh, spend some time doing it because if you can give your dog the confidence now, the rest of its life, it's like, ah, oh, that's a motorcycle, that's a skateboard, that's the blender. I make a lot of money doing in-home sessions to teach dogs to not be afraid of skateboards, and right now it might take one or two exposures with a positive treat. Later on, it might take two, three, or four hundred exposures.
that's a heck of a lot of time for one thing. Imagine there's 344 of those things on the list. So if your puppy is scared of everything, it's gonna spend a lot of time being fearful or you're gonna spend a lot of time fixing it. Much easier to do with this puppy. 11, puppy, puppy, puppy. That's how you can expose your puppy to things on the critical socialization list in a positive way. 